Hey guys, what's going on? Hello and welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath and this is a stack of new awesomeness from Arrow Video. So in this episode, we're going to talk about the new 4K restoration. This is the 4K version. Uh, it's also, so there's a Blu-ray version. This is the limited edition 4K Ultra HD version. There's also a box set that is the Blu-ray. The 4K does not come with the Blu-ray. The Blu-ray does not come with the 4K. It would have been nice if they'd combined those into one package, but they did not. You get two separate versions, 4K and then Blu-ray. Then there's two separate Steelbook versions as well, a 4K Steelbook and a 4K Blu-ray. Uh, so four different editions of Wild Things, but we're going to break it all down in just a second. More Kung Fu from Jimmy Wang Yu, 1972. I did not necessarily intend that to rhyme, but that kind of just happened. Uh, furry horror, furry slasher horror from the early 1980s, Girls' Night Out. And last but not least, we've already talked about Robocop on 4K. I did a review for that in a previous video, uh, previous Arrow new release spotlight a few weeks ago. This is the Steelbook version that was sent to me, presumably to show you. So I haven't unboxed this yet. I thought it would be fun if we did that here in this episode. And I'll be seeing it for the first time that you're seeing it. So let's kick it off with what 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 wild th I'm sorry let's kick it off with wild things can't I must keep a serious tone when talking about wild things because it is a very it's a very distinguished movie I'm just kidding this movie is crazy this movie is bat crap crazy uh I don't know if it is a total success as far as plot wise you know there's like there's holes that they explain over the end credits but was that the point of the movie I think the point of the movie was pretty people in as little clothes as possible with like it's such a time capsule right you look at this movie it's 1998 you got smash mouth on the radio it's sugar ray uh who else is, third eye blind is in this movie it's the like it's just 19 it's my first year of college this is my second year of college actually uh in in i was gonna say in movie form but obviously there were no like <laughs> topless pool parties in my second year of college uh if you want my full review, I'm going to say this. I'm going to focus this particular coverage on the the physical, like what you get. I'm going to, like the movie itself, we're focusing on physical. Um, if you want my full review for Wild Things, head over to SerialAtMidnight.com. It is part of the SerialAtMidnight.com review archive. I tell you exactly what I think about the movie. Break down the themes, the symbolism of the movie, all the stuff that, uh, that I don't really think uh, I have time for or that really fits here on YouTube. So we're going to focus on the tech specs. You guys... It looks great. The 4K restoration, uh, now this is the 4K version. I don't have the Blu-ray, so I can't speak for that. But the 4K Ultra HD version, mwah! you know, it's 35 millimeter from pretty much the end of 35 millimeter because it wouldn't be long before, you know, George Lucas, 1999 for The Phantom Menace. He's like, you guys got to project this stuff digitally. That's what led the digital revolution is George Lucas like holding theaters hostage if they wanted to show his movie. Uh, so this is 98. This is getting very near the end of shot on 35 and how beautiful that can be it has the hdr pass has been taken on this florida looks great the cinematography looks great the people in the movie look great i can't recommend this to you enough uh for me personally you know i i don't love shot on digital i think it's harsh and kind of ugly but 35 is for me cinematic and i think it's gorgeous and this is the fulfillment of what. 35 millimeter can look like in 4k i watched it i see no errors i see nothing you know everybody's kind of on watchdog they're there's like you know they got their binoculars out looking at every new release like is this does this have an error i did not find one i'm sure if there is one we'll know about it soon uh for me it's a great presentation obviously the best presentation wild things has ever had probably ever will have but again you don't get the you don't get the blu-ray and the 4k in this package and i wish that era would have kind of watched out for the cons the customers like future proofing their collections because i think that you need to have the blu-ray and the 4k in the same package but they're two different editions let's talk about what all you get with this limited edition you know this is the limited edition package in the 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 hard the hard shell box uh first of all you are going to get this once the limited edition is gone you'll still have this reversible artwork the artwork on the other side is this um there is also a fold out poster with the new artwork and the classic artwork that I remember being on the in the windows of video stores long after the movie had kind of come and gone I think that probably brought people into the video stores there's also an amazing uh, book I love 
It's not a booklet, man. This is just a straight up book. This is a square bound book that runs, I think it's 80 pages, um, 60 pages. And it's got a couple of great essays in here. Uh, Let's Twist Again, Sex, Murder, and the Late 20th Century Hollywood Thriller, and Shadows in the Sunshine, Wild Things, and Florida Noir. So for a guy like me that likes to, to really dig into film and like what it means and what does this mean? Like Richard Dreyfuss with his mashed potatoes. I'm like, this means something. Uh, I love this stuff. I love diving. You go into that next level. So great stuff there for the for guys like me. Uh, but then the disc itself does not disappoint either. Oh, there's more packing goodies inside. I forgot. By the way, Desperado. Is this coming soon? Is this going to be the next 4K edition from or one of the next 4Ks from Arrow? I love that movie. That's probably my favorite Robert Rodriguez movie. Uh, and we have lobby cards as part of the limited edition exclusive two. So there's Matt Dillon, there's Denise Richards, more Denise Richards, Nev Campbell, Kevin Bacon, and more Kevin Bacon. Uh, so again, when the limited edition version is gone, you won't have the box, you won't have the book, you won't have the poster, you won't have the lobby cards, but you will have this. Presumably with the reversible art wrap and uh, the disc itself and the on disc special features are pretty great So we've got uh, a new There's a there's two audio commentaries There's one with the director and the producer and then there's another audio commentary with the director and the producer and a bunch of the crew like the editor and the composer uh, There's a new shot in 4k uh, 26 minute interview with the director who has a good sense of humor about the movie. I think you should have a healthy sense of humor about this because it is campy. I think he knew, I think he made a campy movie on purpose and he says it's funnier every time I see it. And it is, it's a very funny movie. You got a guy putting like dentures in his, like brushing dentures and then trying to stick it. Just weird stuff, weird stuff from the great age of the nineties when anything, seemingly anything could end up on that big screen. Um, there's a new 15 minute interview with Denise Richards now talking about what it was like to be a newcomer because she'd done Starship Troopers but that hadn't come out when she started shooting this when she was cast that was not out yet and so she talks about that being you know kind of intimidated by what the script called for you know like a lot of nudity and stuff so she basically has to carry most of the nudity for the movie uh how she got a call from Paul Verhoeven after he was like why you won't do nudity for me but you'll do nudity for this other movie Interesting stuff. So it's great to catch up with her and see what she thinks about the movie 24 years later. Uh, the original electronic press kit stuff is here. It's a four minute, you know, wild things coming 1998. Kevin Bacon stars as a cop who blah. And then they talk to, you know, you know, this electronic press kit things. They, they would now they just put them on YouTube. Uh, there is also, I'm trying to find it. Um, uh, trailers, illustrated uh, booklet. We did the booklet. We did all that stuff. Uh, Let's see. Yeah. So I think, oh, there's a, there, this is what I was looking for. There's a 20, I think it's like 27 seconds of Bill Murray stuff with alternate line readings, um, which all that stuff is, the electronic press kits and the Bill Murray deleted scenes, those are carried over from the, I guess the DVD edition and they, their standard definition. I guess they've been upscaled, but they look bad, uh, but they're short, right? So here's, if you want to, if you want to freeze frame this, I'll hold it up for you for, well, let me hold it over here. I'll hold this up for you for just a second if you want to freeze frame that so you can read it. But I want to show you what's under that. So take it off. Woo. Uh, <laughs> I know this movie is absolutely beloved and it's cool that it has a home video. It has four home video versions to, um, to appease the insatiable fan base. I just wish that the Blu-ray and the, the 4K were in the same package. Uh, let's talk about, where do we want to go? Let's do uh, the, the uh, one-armed boxer. So Jimmy Wayne Yu, 1972, so fun. It's so fun. Um, in 1970, he had started The Chinese Boxer, which was a Shaw Brothers movie. Jimmy Wayne Yu in the 60s was discovered by Chang Che. Did a lot of work at Shaw, kind of helped put Shaw, kind of helped him put Shaw on the map. He became a star, put Chang Che, kind of elevated Chang Che too. And he was the one-armed swordsman. And I think there's two of those that he's in. Uh, 1970 comes along. He gets the opportunity to direct. He's like, I want to direct. I want to, what I really want to do is direct. Uh, and so he gets to write, 
produce, choreograph, direct. I don't know if he produced it, but he's the guy behind the Chinese boxer. And it's a huge success. Reportedly made like 200, made a lot of money. Um, I'm not going to do like the whole yen to dollars. It made a lot of money, but he didn't get a raise. And so he was pretty incensed about the whole thing. So around the same time, a Shaw Brothers executive jumps ship and goes to create his own company. So we are here two years later after uh, the Chinese boxer, which by the way, at the time that this movie came out, uh, Kung Fu, like open-handed Kung Fu movies, most martial arts movies and Asian cinema action movies were swords and spears and things like that. They were weapons. Uh, so it's only around this time, Jimmy Wang Yu is helping to create the, what we now know as the Kung Fu genre. Um, so he now makes this for Golden Harvest a couple of years later as the competition for Shaw Brothers. And he's, so it's kind of a spiritual successor and it's crazy. There's, uh, I mean, it's absolutely crazy. Again, full review at serial at midnight.com. Um, I want to stress what we talk about here is that's not really a review. It's kind of me just telling you about it. If you want to know what I actually think about the movie and how it works and go, you know, go to the next level with this stuff, you got to check out the review. There are things you can do in a review, a written review that I can't do here. I just simply can't do it. I don't have the time and there's no, there's no way for me to convey all that information. So please check out the review archive. Uh, tons of stuff there. This movie is absolutely crazy. Every boss, it's like wall to wall fighting the first fight starts before six minutes and it goes all the way through the to the end there's not a lot of plot basically about halfway through the movie mild spoilers for the movie called one-armed boxer he loses an arm and he has to strengthen himself and fight the bad guys with one arm and they're like bosses from an anime or a video game the guy like the, there's one guy that has fangs i'm like is he a vampire I think he is. He's either an animal or a vampire. I think the implication he's a vampire. One guy, there's like a a uh, like a Tibetan. Uh, now I'm getting confused. One guy can just goes like, and he like inflates himself like a pillow. It's amazing. It's the it's the best. So this is uh, this has I think this had a Eureka release maybe in the UK, but now it's getting a, another release here. From Arrow, 2K restoration from the original elements by Fortune Star. Looks great. Bright colors. Uh, good grain structure. Uh, three different audio options: the original Mandarin, the there's an alternate Mandarin, and then U.S. English. Which uh, one of the the alternate Mandarin tracks? The opening credits is Isaac Hayes' theme from Shaft, and they're just like, we'll just use that because you know copyright and that era for Chinese cinema and Asian cinema just in general it's like well, we'll take this it's like that's you know and uh Quentin Tarantino uses that sound effect like that was used in a lot of kung fu movies um but it goes back to Ironside the uh the the I was almost called them Perry Mason the Raymond Burr um like He's in a wheelchair. He's a detective. He's in a wheelchair, kind of like the cop in a wheelchair. Uh, that's from the opening credits of that. And they would just use this stuff and then it just falls into legend and it gets used and reused. And it's awesome. So uh, three different audio tracks. There's a commentary by Frank Jang. De Jang. Frank Jang, who does great commentaries. He's hilarious. He's a lot of fun. He doesn't take this stuff too seriously. And some commentaries are dry, but he is not. He's talking about the Isaac Hayes. He's about he's like you know this was Isaac Hayes. He was in South Park as chef. You know, hello children. I'm like, nice. You did that in a commentary. You didn't have to like. I appreciate that. Um, there is a 41 minute retrospective on Jimmy Wang Yu from 2001. There's trailers. The U.S. trailer under the title of Chinese Professionals, uh, and then trailers for there's 30 minutes of Jimmy Wang Yu trailers, including the sequel, uh, Master of the Flying Guillotine, which I hope is coming soon from Arrow as well. Um, and then we also have the reversible artwork. There's the reversible artwork. And you know, you know, I love a booklet, by the way, uh, the, the big racket, uh, this is, this is part of the road cops. We talked about the, I think we talked about it in the same video that we talked about Robocop when we unboxed the Robocop 4k. I love a booklet. We got two great essays in here. Jimmy Wang Yu and the birth of the Kung Fu movie by David West and a farewell to arms the best titled essay uh, by Simon Abrams. Both of those, I've read both. They're fantastic. I'm telling you, you want to learn about these things, you got to read the booklet. It's the Seinfeld thing. It's like, you got to see the baby. You got to read the booklet. 
presumably after the uh, after this later down the line, I'm assuming the slipcase is going bye bye and that booklet's going bye bye. I think they're worth you know seeking them out early ahead of time so you don't miss out on that. But if the slipcase goes away, remember you do still have that artwork inside. It's reversible art wrap. So the only thing you're really missing is the booklet. Let's talk about Girls Night Out. Uh, this is a It's a slasher for sure. It's a strange movie um, because it's 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 a slasher movie that you know. It, well, in nineteen eighty, I want to make sure this is nineteen eighty two. Um, yeah, nineteen eighty two. The slasher movies, you know, the craze is kind of happening, but we're pre Freddy. Freddy's not on the scene yet, so we got Halloween, we got Jason, we got some of this other stuff that's brewing and bubbling in the background, Giallo and stuff like that. But the formula has not really been established yet. Uh, and so here's a slasher movie that takes place uh, at a college and the idea behind it is there's a scavenger hunt going on, which is a good idea because it means that all the characters have to go forth and hunt for things, putting themselves into different environments and therefore being hunted themselves. I like that. Rather than just sitting in a cabin or a house or whatever, they're out looking for things. I, I like that. Um, but what I really like about this movie, and I don't, it, it's, it's both... It's good for me, but I'm like, what an odd choice. Uh, there's, it's, it take, it's like wall to wall oldies music, and you know I love '50s and '60s music and '70s as well. Like I, I'm a retro guy. I'm, I'm an old school. I'm a Lester Bangs kind of a guy, right? And there's Love and Spoonful, Tommy James and the Shondells, uh, the Ohio Players. But the thing is, they've got all these tracks. From Buddha Records and all these different artists, but they I think there's four songs by the Love and Spoonful, who I love. I mean, John Sebastian and all, like every uh, that is my scene. I love that stuff, but they play them over and over again. I think they play each song like three times, and so it just becomes what the way they wrap this around and into the movie is like it's taking place during an old gold weekend on the college radio station, and it's fun. And it's also interesting to think that those songs in 1982 weren't that old. To call them old gold, like the hit, like what what played in 2010, let's say 2007, right? That's still on the radio now. Uh, like it's so interesting how like what because culture was moving so fast back then. We've kind of slowed down, in my opinion. Um, anyway, Girls Night Out. Ugh. Here's our alternate artwork, which is interesting because this lady isn't even in the movie that's a topic that comes up in the special features is that they marketed this movie with someone who's not even in the movie uh we have oh by the way reversible artwork of course a booklet of course and it's it's good stuff so can you bear it which is a great pun because of the movie the story of girls night out by michael gingold and then about the restoration uh really dense text which i I'm the guy that reads like academic books about movies for fun. That's that's the who has two thumbs and reads academic movie books. This guy. Uh, okay, let's talk about the special features. This is brand new 2K restoration. I think this movie. It says from the original 35 millimeter, millimeter vault elements. When the movie starts, it says that they had to the the 35 millimeter prints. There were no original elements. They used prints provided by the producer, and I I. Th think from no one says this is my my own guess i think this was shot on 16 blown up to 35 and that's what we're seeing because it doesn't have the clarity and the resolution of a 35 millimeter even a print it looks like 16 blown up to 35 film fans you know you know what i'm talking about but uh that's what i think we're dealing with here anyway it's so it's not imperfect it does have like it looks kind of drive-in quality you know, the blemishes and the scratches and the things like that. But it's clean-ish. It's relatively clean. The bottom line is this, this is the best this movie's probably ever going to look unless the original elements somehow just manifest themselves on somebody's front porch. Um, I think this is probably the best that anybody's ever going to be able to do. So we've got the new 2K restoration, uh, original mono audio. Guess what? Uh, brand new audio commentary with uh, film critic and author Justin Kurzweil. And film historian author Amanda Reyes, and you better believe they bring it. Oh, it's already been brought. They are amazing. 
Uh, Staying Alive, a brand new video video interview. They talked to like all the girls and a couple of guys associated with this movie. Staying Alive, a brand new video interview with actress Julia Montgomery. A Savage Mauling, brand new video interview with actress Laura Summer. Alone in the Dark, a brand new video interview with actress Lois Robbins. It Was a Party, a brand new video interview with actor Paul Christie. Love and Death, a brand new video interview with actors Lauren Marie Taylor and John Dietrichson that was shot over Zoom. Uh, the rest of these are like in person, but this was uh, shot over Zoom. Archival video interviews with actress, uh, the archival video interview with actress Julia Montgomery. So you have the new interview and then the one from like 15 years ago, I guess, whenever it was. Uh, the Scare Maker, alternate title card, original trailers, the reversible sleeves. It's like if you love these old horror movies, and I know some of you guys are really into horror. Uh, you're going to want this one for sure because this is a sweet package. And I love the way this is done in sort of a pseudo VHS style. Like the back of it doesn't look like that on the actual Blu-ray, but the, the slipcover has a very... I feel like maybe this is competing with Vinegar Syndrome. It has that Vinegar Syndrome look if you ask me, but that's just my two cents. All right, let's... We've come to the RoboCop portion of our show. Uh, I'm going to hold this up, give everybody a good look at it before... Whoa, hold on, look. Double Heath. This is how I'm going to do all my videos from now on. It's like a weird... Cronenberg, sort of a... Uh, there's everything that's included. I love this edition of RoboCop, this 4K edition. I, I especially, you know, we've talked so much about the, the collectible aspect of this stuff. Uh, I'm really glad that I did get the limited edition version of RoboCop because I love, I came with stickers, it came with a poster, it came with uh, all kinds of stuff in that package. And RoboCop's one of those movies that is, like, I literally grew up with it. Remember the cartoon? Does anybody remember the RoboCop cartoon and the toy line? It's so interesting when you look back on the 80s and you have, like, Rambo toys and alien toys like these are hard R-rated movies that they were marketing toys for all right Ooh, Nice All right, let me carefully remove this and we'll see what's inside well, here. I'll do this Your move creep all right, so we've got our two discs. Uh, I think these are both 4K discs. Yeah, we have the director's cut, which is the only way to watch this movie, and the theatrical cut, um, which I don't know how you go back to after the director's cut. Let me take both of these things out, and I'll show you. Oh, nice. And loaded with special features, too. Okay, let me put these back. Theatrical cut goes back here. This goes here. Uh, this is the same booklet from the limited edition 4K, I believe. Uh, great stuff. I think we've established in this video that I love a booklet. And does this have a table? Yeah, there's our table of contents. I'll just hold that up. Let's just, just read this. The demise of the production code in 1960 and the flood of hitherto forbidden content that filled American cinemas as a result roughly coincided with another trend in the same decade. Major theatrical films finding a second life on primetime television. Because there's uh, the, the, the TV cut is part of this package too, which is amazing. I don't, again, I guess it's there for nostalgia because why would you choose the TV cut when you've got the unrated the, the, the director's cut? with all the like people just exploding, right? It's just like, plop, plop. Uh, all right, so that is gonna do it for this batch of Arrow releases. A lot of, lot of great stuff here. I'm going to put purchase links in the description of this video. I'll probably also pin them to the top of the comments so that if you wanna pick these up, you can do that with those leaks, le those leaks, with those links, and you'll be supporting Serial at Midnight. So uh, I thank you for that, I, that every little bit helps. And uh, tell me what you think about these these movies, these transfers, these editions. I know wild thing. We're all going to be talking about wild things for a long time. So let's continue that conversation in the comments below. There will not be a post credit sequence for this video where I explain the holes in this video. Um, that is a joke for those that have seen wild things. Guys, thank you so much. Take care. Until next time, I will catch you later.